Good morning. Uh, my name is Arlene Link. I am a potter and artist. Uh, I've had people request uh, showing my technique of painting with Amico Velvet Underglazes. This is a finished product uh, of one of my hummingbirds. It's done with the white background and then I do the design over top. Uh, what I'm working on now is a series of hummingbirds. This one's already painted with the underglazes, as you can see. And I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step techniques. I currently have three bowls ready to go. As you can see, there is a, a pencil sketch of each Oh, this lighting. Let's move you up a little bit. Let's see if you can see it a little bit. This way. There we go. Uh, I've used a pencil to lightly sketch in my designs as to where I think they might want to be. Uh, on this series, uh, this particular bowl has three hummingbirds or two hummingbirds with several flowers on them. So my nesting bowls, this one will be one position with the birds. This is a different one. And then I have my larger bird. And I think what I'll do is I'll work on the larger one to start with. As you can see, the pencil sketches are there. What I then do is I take a white underglaze and only where I'm going to put the underglazes uh, do I put the white. And that acts like a, a gesso that you use on canvas uh, to help brighten the colors from the back. Uh, I like the effect of the raw clay. The clay that I'm using is Starworks White and it's out of North Carolina from Star, uh, Starworks Clay. Uh, I use several clays, but on this particular set, it's the star white. Um, as I said, I just started with the white. You can somewhat see the colors that are there. And when I do start painting, I start with the lighter colors first. Um, on the bird, I will use Amico Leaf Green. It's a V345. I also use um, Chartreuse which is three, V343, Amico White, which is V360, and a little bit of yellow. I use the uh, Intense Yellow V391. I like using paper plates. That way I can just put my colors out. I'll take some white, put it on my plate, And I go to the leaf green. So that I can mix. And I do mix my colors similar to what I do when I paint. Oh, that's an empty three intense yellow. Always have a spare. I go with the brighter colors because at higher temperatures, some of the colors do have a tendency to burn off, uh, like the pinks and the purples. Um, experimenting with your colors, uh, what I do is I recommend people make uh, a test tile and then put one layer of each color and then two and three so that you can see the variations as you fire it. Um, Took me a little time to figure out how I wanted to use the colors and how they were to come up. So I'm going to start with our hummingbird. All right, uh, I use white with the green, the leaf green, and I'll come in with the hat. Ah, where's my hummingbirds? <laughs> so I can get a look at what these are. All right, where I know there's going to be some green going down the leaves or their their wings and I prefer to start out with light in color because I can always always add um, more color as I go and with time 
and, uh, and practice, you'll get to know what colors you want. In the belly area, I like to use the white, but I will put a little bit of green, but mostly the white, to get that shimmery underside. I mix a little bit of yellow in, not yellow, I'm sorry, chartreuse, so that I still get that same green effect in the belly. Same thing with the head. I come down toward the where the eye is. Um, I figured I'd do this series. This is part one of doing the hummingbird bowls. Only because it does take a while to paint. And I figured this way be the best way to show it off. Now off to the side, I do have some black underglaze that's already on here that's dry. I'll just add a little bit of water to it. And it gives me just enough black to do my shading. difficult painting upside down but that's okay and then just do it in light strokes I'd rather add than take away although there is a way of erasing underglaze off of a piece once it's on here I like to, uh, with my young students, they'll get upset if they make a mistake. I said, oh, we can fix that. A little bit of yellow. And if you look at the hummingbird, it has a lot of different colors throughout it. Depending on the birds that you're painting, it's amazing how many different kinds of hummingbirds there are. All right. I do have a little bit of red on the side here too, just to help me. Let's see. To do the back, the breast, and the lower part of the head. And as you can see, that's the beginning of my hummingbird. Now at this point, if I left it like this, it would be more of a watercolor. But I like them to be a little more colorful. Add my shading in as we go. I do like to mix my colors. I don't use them straight out of the jar out most of the time. It currently is um I guess about six o'clock in the morning, April 15th. Early morning is the best time for me to paint or late at night. Well, lately we can stressed and everything. I'm ready for bed at nine o'clock. I don't know about you guys, but I am. Uh, let's see. Now, at some point, I will come back in once this is all finished and add the black lines, as you can see on this particular plate. That's the amount of detail that I put into my pieces. Um, the, 
black lines are the finishing part and I use a very thin brush um, I think I think I believe it's a, this one is a five slash zero but I do have one that's uh, zero zero so depending on how much of a detail of the black that I want to use um, even though I put a lot of shading in my pieces they just don't seem finished to me until I add that little bit of detail. I used to outline things considerably, but now I don't do it as quite as much. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then come back to it. Let's work on our flowers. I love radiant red. And again, I do it in, uh, <coughs> excuse me, stages my paint on my plate or my palette my very expensive palettes uh, with this I like to use all right where are you at oh different brushes and these are the three different four different brushes that I might use for doing flowers depending on the amount uh, of work that I do I'll start off with the white, the fatter one. Uh, it's a round tip. Mix my red and white just to give me a little bit of the pink. And then just kind of outline where I want it to be. And I kind of paint the brush strokes in the direction of where I want my veins to go or um, the flow of the flower. Because once you paint over it, you don't see the pencil lines as much. Now, as you can see, I still have some pencil lines here. And that's okay because they're just a, a guideline of where I want to put them. Then I'll start layering. Start at the bottom. Come up. I don't want so much white anymore. Now I'm looking to do red. Now red is one that can fade out at the higher temperatures. And I fired a cone, uh, cone six. Uh, the reason I fired a cone six is the... Uh, Clear glazes that I was using, uh, just I was not happy with them. For the amount of work that I put into painting my pieces, if you brush it on and you go over a portion of it, uh, it can cloud. I've had some craze. Um, I have a, a mother goose teapot that I made several years ago, made out of porcelain, hand painted. She came out beautiful put a clear coat on her and freight and she crazed like crazy. So I have her as a, a family heirloom that we just sit and look at. I know people say you can use it, but I prefer not to take that kind of a chance, especially, you know, if I get solid or uh, want my grandkids to use it. At this point, I'm adding a little bit of black to my shading. Like I said, it's dry on my plate, and I just wet it a little bit to give me some, just a little bit of that gray. And then I can come back in, and just where I want the creases to be, or where the flower actually, um, you can see, you can see, start seeing some of the detail that's going into the flowers, the shadowing. Then I'll come back in with more red. I can do anywhere from, I'd say three, four, possibly five coats, depending on what kind of a desired effect I want to get on this. You got to remember you want the highlights, you want the shadows. 
And yes, I'm going over the, the black that I just put on. And before you start doing this on a piece, I do recommend that you practice so that you can see how your colors are going to show up on your pieces. I need some more white. That looking. This is going to still need some more red because I can see some of the white coming through. And I mean, if you like a watercolor effect, you can do that too. You just got to be careful when you're firing, what temperature you're firing to. At the lower temperatures, you can use one to two coats to give that watercolored effect. But at the, the higher temperatures, Reds have a tendency to turn pink. So if you want a pink, uh, similar to this, if you can see the tops of these thistles, that was the radiant red fired to cone six, and it turns more of a, a pink color. Uh, so I recommend when people want pink to use the radiant red, uh, if they, uh, because the, the lighter pinks will burn out, the pur purples will burn out. Um, unless you put a lot more coats on. Uh, but the purples, I have a tendency to put maybe five or six coats um, with the lighter colors uh, in order to build it up. And that's also where the white background helps too because it, uh, the colors won't burn out as, as much. So that's why I put, the, one of the reasons I put the white on the back. I'm the type of artist that likes to paint what I see, not so much abstract, although I have learned to let loose. I have created some things over the years that aren't my normal style or technique. I've tried different things. Uh, personally, dipping, I don't like. Um, I don't enjoy it as much. It's not as, I guess, being, being creative. Maybe if I can figure out different ways of doing it to create this type of stuff. Uh, and that might be something I work on in the near future. But now, with my flowers, I kind of do the same thing as I did with the bird. I go with the lighter colors first and bring them up. And then build up from there. A little bit of red in there. Uh, as you can see, I got a little bit of red on my leaf. I can show you the magic of erasing on flat on your your bisque pieces. Kind of one of a, a stiff brush. Come back in here once it's dry and that's not very wet and I take a clean brush, clean water and a clean brush. And just erase it away. And right now it's a little wet. But once it dries, you will not see that red. Okay, so and that's only on, on the, the bisque that you can do that. Greenware, you can just wipe it off. But with bisque, uh, a lot of people, you know, get upset when they make a mistake and they try to hide it. If you try to cover that, 
uh, it's going to uh, change your color, um, make it a different color that you may not want. But then again, you might have a, a nice, happy medium. All right, so we're going to come back in. Back to my black. Now you might want to do it on a different section of the black because I mixed red over in this side. Now I'm doing the greens. You kind of figure out where you want your shadow lines. Uh, a lot of my work is done from uh, photographs. I am very fortunate to live in uh, Senador.